What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here. Massive, massive game this weekend against Chelsea at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. To the right of me, I have got Chelsea guest Louis Beneventi. How are you doing today? I am very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, kind of, Jose took over from Spurs when mm -hmm. we were 12 points behind you. Now we're three points behind you going mm. into the game. Mm. Um, how are you feeling about the whole situation at the moment? With, with which bit? What do you want me to address first? Well, first of all, how well you started the season. Mm -hmm. And since Jose has come, your feelings on Jose being a first Spurs manager, first yeah. of all, and Spurs kind of creeping up as well. Yeah. Well, I think... The, to be honest, for me, I'm. I know a lot of Chelsea fans are annoyed, and rightly so. I think you know you, you want to be getting results, but for me, this season was always a dummy run, if, mm -hmm. it, if it were. Um, you know, I, I look at these young lads, and people are saying, you know, actually, they're not actually that young in that team. I mean, if you go through it, Mason Mount's been playing regularly, Rhys James, Fakaya Tamori, Tammy Abraham, Kepa's a young goalkeeper. You know, you've got lots of cheek still to come back. It, it is a young side, so. For me, I, I'm not expecting anything this season. I don't I don't think it's fair to put that kind of pressure on a bunch of young lads who, quite frankly, if we didn't have a transfer ban, wouldn't have been called upon. And since they have been called upon, they've been performing superbly. I think that, you know, it's it's been a great season for us so far. If you told me going into Christmas, we'd be potentially in the top four or level on points with the top four mm. in the round of 16 of the Champions League and our youth system striker would be the second top goal scorer in the league, I'd laugh you out of the room. But it's happened, and look, the lads are plateauing now. It's always going to happen, so we've just got to see what happens from here. Obviously, you had a great start to the season under Lampard. Your squad's looking very fresh and vibrant um, and very young as well. Do you think the Chelsea fans have got kind of carried away with the start of the season you had and then kind of the dip in form? Yeah, uh, well, yes and no. I think there are a lot of Chelsea fans are in the same boat as me uh, for the match going ones that I speak to that are you know, thinking, you know, we'll see what happens this season. Irrespective of what happens, it's great. You know, we've got Frank Lampard in. We've got a connect between the fans, the board, and the playing team now in terms of the youth players as well. And I think there's it's just the whole package right now, and it's working out well. Um, there was always going to be a bad stint. Mm -hmm. I, I was prepared for that, but I did get carried away at some points. I think there was games against Norwich, games against Wolves, but Tomori scored that you know, absolute worldy yeah. that I was sitting there going, oh, bloody hell, I've got some good players in our hands here. And, but we, that's always been known. I mean, for the past decade, you could argue Chelsea have had the best youth system in the world um, in terms of the players we've been producing. But it's just been the follow through to get to the first team, which mm. has always been difficult. Now with the transfer ban, that got removed. Players started coming through, which wouldn't have been coming through if it wasn't for the transfer ban. And they've developed and built into a very solid team they're having a bad run at the moment but i think there's a part of me which is you know quite happy with with the progress and that's what it is this it's progress this season and then we see where we finish this year we set the benchmark go right what do we need to do to get back to where we need to try and be competing no no one should be anywhere man united have no god-given right to be in the top four Leeds have no god-given right to be in the premier league mm -hmm. some fans think that some fans think Chelsea have a right and should be in the Champions League. But if you're expecting Champions League football from a bunch of 20-year-old lads at the beginning of the season, I'm sorry, you're deluded. You're deluded. It's delusional. And I think that, you know, players like Mason Mount, who have been facing a lot of criticism, are fatigued. They've played a lot of games for someone who's so young. And slowly but surely, they're developing as a player. And, and he is a prime example. Same for Tammy Abraham. People are saying, he's not really been doing a lot in some games. He's been not been doing this, he's not been doing that. He's the second top goal scorer in the league behind Jamie Vardy, who's a seasoned Premier League veteran now. And obviously and, some of yeah. your players as well, or a lot of your players, this is the first uh, year in the Premier League. Exactly. And this this, this is the thing. When, when people are, are criticising them, and I think, look, I'm not saying they shouldn't be criticised. There are some things which, as a professional footballer, you shouldn't be doing, and mistakes they shouldn't be making. But, again, they're young players in the best league in the world, in the most competitive league in the world, attempting to learn something new. And it's it will come with time. I, I believe I believe in this squad, and I believe in what they're capable of. A few tweaks, I think, with some seasoned players and some players which can, you know, bring us to the next level. Much like what happened with Liverpool, where they had a you know a squad of people who understood the squad uh, and understood the, team, uh, the league, sorry, in the team, and then they brought in a Virgil Van Dijk, they brought in a Sadio Mane, they brought in a Mo Salah, and they it just took them to the next level. And I think 
that's what we need. We just need a couple of tweaks here and there, and then you know we we, we could. I'm not going to say we will because who knows what Liverpool and Man City are going to do, yeah. and you're going to do. But we yeah. could be competing for trophies in the next couple of years. So obviously we're here to do a combined eleven. Um, just one more question before we get on to that combined eleven. You talk about transfer bans. Um, do you? And I think that the transfer ban was kind of one of the best things that happened to mm. Chelsea because of you know the team that you've got at the moment mm. and all the players coming from the youth. Do you think that um, taking away this transfer ban now, that um, Chelsea might slip back into their old habits? I think there's a danger of it. Whether or not that will actually happen with Jody Morris and Frank Lampard there, I'm not sure. I think we might see more of a balance. I think you will you will see some better players be bought into the squad because they yeah, there's, certain, there's a certain level of competition where you know Tammy Abraham's great. He's having a great season. Is he going to be the guy which is going to really push on as he gets older? Or are we going to see what's happening at Manchester United, for example, where if we don't get someone in, you're going to see someone relax and you know just not push themselves as much as they could. If, I mean, we've been linked with Timo Werner. The debate of would he you know, want to compete and not be the guaranteed starter is obviously a question which will be raised. But him and Tammy Abraham, it might push him. But you will see players that are bought. But I think if, with this being a project, and that's evidently clear at the minute, you can see that Frank Lampard and Jody Morris will be nurturing players and bringing them through at the same time, but it will be the right players with the right fit for the team. That's the ideal scenario, but I could not tell you what's going to happen when we start buying players again, because I'm not Mystic Meg, but you know we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this combined 11. Indeed. The rules for the combined 11 is um, injuries stand, suspension stand, so it's going to be whatever team you think is going to play on the weekend, mm -hmm. and we're going to pick a combined 11 and see which mm -hmm. players from Chelsea and Spurs will get into the team. Okay. Uh, the formation is going to be 4 2 three, one. Okay. And yeah, so let's start with the goalkeeper. So obviously it's Gazaniga up against Kepa. I want to know a bit about Gazaniga because for me, I consider Kepa, and a lot of people have a go at me for this, I think he's definitely third or fourth at the minute with the form, maybe the fifth best keeper in the league. Um, because he, he, he has a lot of potential. He's a good keeper, good shot stopper. His distribution isn't the greatest. But Gazaniga stepped into the shoes of Hugo Lloris, obviously, who's out. Um, mm. And I mean, he has been performing well. What's what's it been like with him? Well, I think obviously there were question marks over Gazaniga. Um, there's actually a, a bit of the fan base who thinks he's better than Loris, which mm. is a weird one. His distribution is second to none, absolutely amazing. Um, his shot stopping isn't as good as Loris. I think Loris is probably one of the best shot stoppers in the league. Um, mm. But in terms of is he better than Kepa at the moment, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think he's definitely getting there and he's impressed a lot of people since he's mm. um, taken Lloris's spot in the team since he's been out injured. Um, and he is a good goalkeeper, but I think he needs just a that bit more time in the team just to see how good he is. Okay, all right, so we're going Kepa and goal then? I think so, yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. We'll go with that. I think, yeah, I think Kepa's the, the number one, isn't he? He's the, the guy who's been in between the sticks for Chelsea for a long time. A lot of Chelsea fans, again, Twitter, so not a lot of Chelsea <laughs> fans, just what I tend to see a lot of. Um, if it was Lloris, so I think we'd have more of a conversation. If, if, yeah, if it was Lloris, it's more of a conversation. I think, for me, I, I do feel Lloris is overhyped sometimes. I think, look, I'm not going to take away from the fact he's won a World Cup. I think his handling is poor as a, a seasoned goalkeeper. I don't think he's that great a leader as someone for Tottenham Hotspur. Like when he's your club captain, I don't feel People that... People say he's more of a quiet leader inside the dressing room, he's more vocal, that kind of thing. But okay. I, I always thought that goalkeepers don't make the best captains anyway. I mean, I think like you look at like the Brad Friedels and the Peter Schmeichels and Oliver Kahn's, I think they're the guys you look at and go, yeah. Obviously there are the exceptions, but I think... The vast majority. Yeah, I think the vast majority yeah. shouldn't be captains. I think a captain should be a centre-back or a centre-mid yeah. or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I agree. I think, I think I am quite old school in that approach. But I mean, yeah, I think... OK, we'll go with Kepa. I, th I think there's a, there's a lot of questions raised at the minute. I think him and Gazaniga... I mean, if you're saying he's, he's good, but you know he needs a bit more time, then I think it's the obvious answer is Kepa. But I think there is a lot of questions to be raised about Kepa at the moment. And they feel, again, it's another example of a player which feel should be pushed more. But I mean, find me a first choice keeper who's going to want to become a second choice. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So, you know, we'll have to see. All right, moving on to right back. Who have you been playing? Or who do you think is going to play right back this weekend? I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, I think it will be, well, I hope it will be Reese James. So it will be Reese James up against Serge Aurier. Reese James. 
You think so? Rhys James. Tell me a bit about Rhys James. I don't know about him. So Rhys James as a player, I mean, I want to know what they're feeding him for a start because <laughs> he's 19 and built like a brick shit house. I think is the best way to describe it. Fantastic on the ball, reads the game well. Um, he he can put a ball in as well, which no one's seen for quite a while at Chelsea. Um, really dangerous on the crosses and better defensively uh, than some players. I think uh, I'm not going to put him in the conversation yet because he's not played enough game time. But a lot of people are putting him in the conversation with Trent Alexander Arnold and Wamba Saka and him as who's yeah, the best right back. It's a bit early, but but he has the capacity and the potential to potentially push Trent Alexander-Arnold into more of a deep line playmaker position because Reese James's overall game I'd say obviously the passing and the crossing is it, that's Trent's thing but the defensive game and just the game as a right back he's a much better player and against Serge Aurier I mean we work in the same office together lads and uh Ben's just moaning about the fullbacks. <laughs> so that's my argument as to why Reese James goes into the team. The thing is about Aurier, yeah, since Mourinho's come, we have seen a different Serge Aurier. Yeah. He's kind of nothing to do with the defensive side of the team. Mm -hmm. He's kind of pushed up by the halfway line okay. all game and he's just been told to attack. And I think so that kind of suits Serge Aurier. You don't have that defensive responsibility where kind of he can make that calamitous error in the box, give away a penalty, a red card, that kind of thing. So, so what you're saying is he doesn't have the defensive duties of a right back. What's Correct. a right back's first thing to do? Yeah, but it depends what kind of formation <laughs> we're playing. You we're know, playing four you, in the back. You know too well Jose Mourinho, he likes to have one full back up there and one full back backing into a back three. So yeah. that's the way we're playing at the moment. So actually our right back doesn't really need to defend. Yeah, but I mean, how are we managing this team? You know what I mean? Like, do this we, is a Tottenham do we, channel. We're do going we to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, no, I, I think Reese James, is, he's a right back. It's got to be in. I'm sorry. Like, I get what you're saying, but we're not playing with win backs here, are we? It's, it's a four at the back. But I can't see how you can put someone like Reese James over Aurier with just because of the um, you're only saying this now alone. you're only saying this now because you're on camera is, we go off camera you will be seeing <laughs> oh, I hate surgery useless <laughs> um, no nah, but I genuinely I don't know much about Reese James that's the thing okay. so I think that's the only reason I'm going to put Serge Aurier in there rock paper scissors rock paper scissors rock paper scissors <laughs> <laughs> okay right. ready this, this will just decide it ching chang chong yeah on chong yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, right, okay, ready? Ching, chang, chong. Okay. Serge Aurier gets in, go on. Okay. Left back. Uh, Aspilicueta or Emerson against who? Well, you got you Yam put Tongan. You can have Yan. You can have Yan. I think Aspilicueta's... Do you know what? No, I'm going to argue a case for Dave here. I think Dave has been criminally underrated for quite a few years. Is he more of a right than a left? They've been playing him left-back more, to be honest. I mean, he played that whole season under Mourinho at mm. left-back. And like you said, we are going Mourinho tactics. So, you know, that's why <laughs> I'm putting him there. Um, but I think that uh, Aspilicueta is probably better going forward than Jan Vertonghen is. Defensively, he's solid. I'd say he's still one of the best defensive players in the league, or has the capacity to be. I know a lot of people are going to be in the comments already saying something about that. Uh, but I think the issue with Aspilicueta is... As time has gone on, because he's played so regularly, his body is catching up with him. I think I think there's similarities between the two. There's Aspen definitely Lequeta similarities. And Batongan, you know, they're both aging. Uh, they're both like being caught up with their legs and all that. Uh, they're both been playing at left back. Yeah. The difference is, I think Vertonghen kind of drifts into a back three, where P is more. He bombs forward, yeah. Bombs forward, where <laughs> it's not really his game. Mm. Um, I would argue Vertonghen. I think Vertonghen's been probably our best centre back of the decade even though we're putting him at left back I think yeah. he does a job at left back I think if you saw last season when we played Dortmund he was bombing it up and down that left side yeah. scored a goal obviously got the winner against Wolves on the weekend mm. um, would, I, I got to say Vertonghen what if it was a case that we put Aspilicueta in at left back and then brought Vertonghen into the centre back conversation because I think there's well I haven't really got a leg to stand on when it comes to centre backs because we I'll are take useless that. I'll take that um I mean, Aldevar and Vertonghen is, is as old as time, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it's one of those where, are you two centre-backs, Aldevar and Vertonghen? Yeah, OK. Can't, All right, I so... Can't say names at the same time. So let's put Azpilicueta left-back. Yep. Vertonghen centre-back. Yep. 
Um, obviously, we got Aurier right back. So who, who is that last centre back spot? I think Rudiger and Tamori are the two to have the conversations. Rudiger's come back into the side recently. You can already see that he's made us more sturdy. Um, but do any of them get in over Toby Alderweireld? I mean, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Rudiger has, you know, come into the side being more solid. But he's not played enough. And Tamori, even being probably one of the best young centre backs in the league, as someone who to do to watch out for, he doesn't get ahead of Alderweireld because uh, he's he's still one of the best centre backs out there, in my opinion. Um, Agreed. So yeah, I'll take that. All right. So the back four is Serge Aurier on the right. Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld in the middle with Azpilicueta on the left. Now we and Kepper in goal. And Kepper in goal. We move on to the double pivot in midfield. Okay. Um, I think Spurs will probably play Sissoko and Eric Dyer this weekend. Okay, I'm not adding Frankenstein in the team, okay? <laughs> He's not getting in there because he is useless. No, I think you're going to get a bit of joy in the centre mids. Jorginho has to be in there. Jorginho has to be in there. Who, who, who are your two centre mids that you're going to be starting? I mean, to, to be Jorginho honest, I, it'll be Jorginho, Kante, Kovacic. Kovacic under Lampard this season has been unreal. Mm. To be honest, if you're going for the three in midfield, I'm sorry, it has to be those three. We're going for the, two in midfield. But you got a third one. It's four, two, three, one. Four, two in a double pivot, one number 10 and oh. two wingers. Well, Kovacic can play a number 10, so I'm, I'm right, not budging. You can save budging. him to fight Deli Ali then, go on. Yeah, he will win that. No, I'm, no chance. Yes, he will. No, no He's chance. been, okay, right, we'll get to that conversation in a minute. Kante and Jorginho are better than Dyer and Sissoko put together. And you cannot so, so which one? So which one are you going to put up against Sissoko or which one are you going to put up against Dyer? Kante against Dyer, so I'm guaranteed right, to get so him that's, the that's team. guaranteed, Kante. I mean, actually, you know what? I could put Kante up against Sissoko because they pretty much do the same job, don't they? Yeah, just... just yeah. Warm it up and down, basically. Yeah, and who's better at doing that? I'd say Kante. Yeah, okay, so Kante goes in there, and who's better at Jorginho and, Eric, and, uh, and Dyer? Everyone knows my feelings about Eric Dyer, so... Uh... So, Jorginho. Cool. <laughs> Superb. Move on. Right. So, let's move on to the right wing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for us, it's going to be Lucas Moura. Who's it going to be for you? Willian or Hudson? Willian. Hudson or Doyle still coming back from an injury. Um, he's been the guy who started the most for us. I, look, I think Willian's had a lot of criticism over the past few years. Still gets criticism this year. This season under Lampard, he's actually been very good and been very been a very important player for us. Um, I, I've I've been a big critic of him, uh, but he is someone who I think, in terms of just the general work rate, and someone who he does struggle with the final ball sometimes. You know, he does he dribbles well and then he gets that final cross and goes right. What do I do here? Um, but he carries a team forward. He's good at the link-up play, um, and he's he's just generally been quite important for for drawing players out over the past few months. I mean, he is someone who gets doubled up on a lot of the time now because mm -hmm. he does have that ability. So I'd put Willian forward. I think the argument for Lucas Moura is obviously his goal scoring. Yeah. So obviously Lucas Moura, his end product is improving all the time. I think. I think when he first came to Spurs. Couldn't really get a goal, couldn't really get an assist, but I think it's really improving. Mm. Obviously, he scored a hat trick in the Champions League semi final mm. last season. Um, since Mourinho's come as well, his goal scoring form has been really, really good and seen a lot more game times than he did when Pochettino was here this season. Um, I've got to argue Lucas Moura's case because yeah, I, th I just think that you would prefer, even you would prefer Lucas Moura in your team than Willian in your team. I haven't seen enough of Lucas Moura to really argue it. Um, for me, I, I just look at Willian and I just look at he's 30 plus and he's still improving. Yeah, uh, when you've got Lucas Moura, who's around what, 27? I thought he was about 40. <laughs> <laughs> with a receding hairline. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to have to stick with Willian on this one because I know who's going on the left and I can't argue it. Although, ooh, I you can't, you can't, you can't do this uh, just because of who's going in the team. Look, no, we've given you the no, centre mids. Uh, what do you we've mean given you've you given me back. the centre? I've given, given you a you right a back. Keeper. I mean, I think actually, fate decided the right back. Let's yeah, be honest. Fate. <laughs> I might put forward Christian Pulisic because mm. he's been unreal and his feet are a mate. Like I think you've great. got more an argument if you do uh, pick Pulisic, but. Because Lucas Moura has had more of that kind of experience in the Premier League, I still think you have to pick. How many goals? How many goals has Lucas Moura scored this season? 
I'm not Simeon. <laughs> <laughs> call, call him. Simeon! <laughs> hey, Siri! <laughs> oh, shut I up, go away. I think he scored around five or six. I'm not sure. Okay, Pulisic scored about the same, and he's got a few assists. End products there from Pulisic at the minute. He's starting on regularly. The right hand side is not his strongest thing, but he is definitely someone who could improve a team massively. And it, and this <clears> ball retention is unreal. I'm yeah. yeah I'm gonna I'm you know what, I'm changing it. I'm going Christian Pulisic instead of Willian. So it's a difficult one because I think they are actually quite similar players. Fate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ching Chang Chong. Oh, hey! oh, oh God, Lucas Moura! <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Moura! <laughs> All right, now we go on to the left-hand side. Oh, son, that move on. Who's <laughs> your left winger? Oh, it's Pulisic. Okay. Pulisic goes on the left for us, or Hudson Odoi, or without. It changes really. They just float. Um, right. So humans on on the left. Now the number ten, Deli Ali, against Mateo Kovacic. Mateo Kovacic Why? all day. Well, for a start, he's been producing for the entirety of the season. He doesn't moan at the age of 23 going, oh, my legs don't do what they used to. When did Deli Ali do that? He Look it up. He's literally, he literally moaned before Mourinho joined going, my body doesn't do what it used to, moaning like a 35-year-old veteran when he's only been playing for what? Five, six fabricated years. Fabricated rubbish. It's not fabrica fabricated. He's on the rubbish. BBC. Go check it out. I'll show it to you afterwards. What, what in the uh, in the transfer gossip section? No, it's an actual <laughs> article. Deli Ali going, my body can't do what it used to. Well, it's doing more than it used to. I now. mean, he, look, he's he's definitely back in form. But Mateo Kovacic, argue, I mean, I heard someone say it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run with this now. He's arguably apparently one of the best central midfielders in the planet right now. Maybe, but not not, not one of the best number tens on the planet. He can play number ten. He's played he number. He played number ten he for. Might, he, he played it for Inter. Able. He played it for Real Madrid, and he won a Champions League with Real Madrid there. So oh, playing a so, second part bit role on the bench. Yeah, all right. Um, I mean, <laughs> he's he's been performing for a whole season. He's been so important. Look, Ryan Bertrand has won a, a Champions League before, so uh, that's not really an argument. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you wouldn't know what a trophy is. So, you know, it's fine. Look, just hush your gums. You're on a Tottenham channel. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, Deli Ali is probably the best number ten on current form in the Premier League right now? No, he's not. Who is? David Silva. No, on current form. David Silva. Why? David Silva is just the best. He it, might be. I, I, oh, I, no, I no, 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 hang on, no, 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 here you go, here you go. Kevin De Bruyne on form. Yeah, but Kevin De Bruyne is not really a number Here we 10. go. No, no, no. See, oh, he's not really a number 10, he is he? He back a bit more. Nah, you're talking shit. Uh, uh, yeah, Kevin is as literally a second striker. Oh, and that's a number 10, is it? <laughs> it's a bit further up. No, exactly. So it's not a number 10 either. So your argument's right, completely look, null look, and look, void. Look, 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 look. I'm not having Deli Ali not in this team. I'm not, not having Mateo Kovacic in this team. Well, you should have put him in centre mid then, where he belongs. Well, he, he plays as a forward, not centre mid. He is the guy who's furthest forward out of Kante, Ko uh, Kante Kovacic and Jorginho. He's the one who's usually on the edge of the box with the well, reproducing balls and recycling the possession. And then on top of that as well, he scored a couple of bangers in the past couple of weeks from the edge of the box. So have that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Well, one of the best. See, how many goals has Delhi scored this season? How many has Kovacic scored? If Kovacic has been so good the whole season and you're talking about what a great player he is and the best inter mid in the Premier League yet. Uh, no, no, okay, no, 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 no. I'm not saying then. that. Oh, okay, let's we get it up. Let's have a look. Let's go on who scored. And Deli Ali's only been performing for a month, yeah? Let's see who scored more goals. Okay. You want to look at the stats? I'm telling you, Mateo Kovacic is unreal. Look, and you can compare them as well. Right, what look, is... Whoever's got the better goals to assist stats will go in the team. Mateo Kovacic, here we go. Age 25, Croatia, 12 appearances this season. Where's the comparing? One thing? goal to assist. Shots per game, 0 0.65. Tackles, two. Dribbles, okay, two. Here's the goal. Goals. Oh, that's Champions League. Three, three goals. He scored. That's okay. Premier League. One goal, two assists. All right, go to Deli Ali. You don't even need to go to Deli Ali because I can tell you it's much more than that. Go on. Five and Five three. goals and three assists for one month in form. Dead rubber. Deli Ali gets in the team as the second striker, number 10, whatever you want to say. Uh, case closed. Thank you very much, Louis. And now we're going to go for the striker. <laughs> Harry Kane against Tammy Abraham. Who I, are you putting in? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait. How many goals, if we're doing that, how many goals has Kane scored in the Premier League this season? Harry Kane is England captain. Tammy Abraham can't don't, even get into the England team. Don't care, don't care. You've literally just used a goals argument, so let's go with that argument again, shall we? How many goals has Harry Kane, and you said, this is all on current form as well, you were saying. Mm -hmm. How many goals has Harry Abraham's Kane? dried up, though. Answer the question. 
Oh, no, he hasn't. He, sco he's, he's, he scored like a, two, a game ago. A game ago. So, go on. So, uh, tell, tell me how many goals Harry Kane scored in the Premier League this season. He scored a couple less than Tammy Abraham. Has he? Yeah. That's funny. There you go. Dead rubber. Tammy Abraham goes in if we're using that argument. Yeah, but we're not using that argument for this oh, one. Oh, we're not, are no, we? No, Harry funny Kane, that. Funny you cannot, that. You cannot not put Harry Kane in. You can't. It's, it's just not possible. Oh. And you know that. Why can't we take Deli Ali out and go 4-4-2? Four, four, no, no, no. But going four two three one. That's that's the rules of the game. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 you, game. Game. Yeah, you want that game. formation. Yeah. God. If we did one on your channel, you can pick the formation. No, I. You know what? I'd be flexible because I'd like to have a have a debate. And if there's a way we can make it work, you kind of make it malleable. <laughs> <laughs> Which is by taking Deli Ali out of the frigging team and put Tammy Abraham in. No chance. No chance. <sighs> I mean, you literally you, 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 he's picking and choosing. It's your channel. I can't really say a lot to be honest. This is can a dictatorship, I? isn't it? Is <laughs> is all right. So the team has been finalised. The team is Kepper in goal, right back Serge Aurier, centre backs of Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld, with a left back of Azpilicueta. Centre mids is Kante and Jorginho. Right mid Lucas Moura. Number ten Deli Ali. Left mid Human Son and strike force of Harry Kane. It really should be Tammy Abraham based on the odds that you're making, <laughs> but you know. But anyway, whatever. that is the combined eleven. Go check over on Louis's channel. We're going to do a Chelsea and Tottenham combined eleven for the decade, which will, could be sad news for us. But it will be <laughs> sad news because there won't be a single Tottenham player in that team. <laughs> we'll see about that. Like, subscribe, and comment. Tell me what you think of this combined eleven. And as always, come you Spurs. No.